Hello. Well, I've seen lots of cool YouTube videos of people building these uh, gumball machines and banks, and so I was inspired. Having gone to the Barrier La La Bay Area LEGO Users Group yesterday, it was a nice pile of Technic pieces, and I decided to build this little dispenser. And what I do is I just turn the crank in the back, and out from the front comes little envelopes or large pieces of gum. And actually that worked beautifully. And actually I started building the back part before I built the front part and they were both, actually I think the dispenser part was harder than the back part, but I'll talk about the back part first. And this is one of the few things I remember from mechanical engineering. I wanted to do lots of mechanisms when I went to school. But I quickly learned it was mostly about thermodynamics and fluid flow and heat transfer and strength of materials, which are great things, but I always like mechanisms. The one thing I remember from mechanisms was the four bar linkage, which is this magic thing you find all over the place once you know, know to look for it, where you basically have these four links one, two, three, and the fourth being actually the constraint that holds these two points together, kind of like the electrical equivalent of ground, if you will. Sort of. And this lets you do kind of complicated motion, like in this case, I'm turning a rotation here into an oscillation here. As I turn the, the linkages, it kind of creates a complicated motion which causes this pinion to be driven and to drive the rack back and forth, which is connected to this pusher piece which you can see going back and forth up here. And uh, you find the four bar mechanism all over the place, like in the trunk or the hood of your car sometimes, not always, but sometimes. And it just is this kind of very cool thing. And you can change, but like, the lengths here have impact on what happens. There's characteristics related to the ratio of these lengths that cause the speed or the ratio of speed of the uh, the outgoing speed versus the incoming speed to be affected and the, the distance, the travel that happens, you know, you can play with that. So it's, it's kind of one of those little fundamental, interesting mechanical engineering things. And that actually didn't take too long to get working just right. There's certain combinations that just will bind that don't work. This <clears throat> particular combination worked. I did others, but this gave me the right travel here and, and didn't and doesn't bind. You'll have to experiment a little. It's really not that hard. And then this dispenser took a little more work and here I basically have this little windshield to hold the pieces in. And you can see as I turn the ejector, if you will, pops them out one at a time. <coughs> now this is probably take 12, maybe even 13 of this movie because the truth is cool as Legos are they really are not an engineering material and what I mean by that is you don't really build things that are going to have predictable properties like you would steel or certain plastics it just doesn't have the same um, Predictability. Well, for instance, you know, just the even though they have incredible tolerances between the tubes and the studs and so forth, sure, that's in manufacturing, but when you actually push the stuff together, whether or not things line up perfectly or if they're off by a few thousandths, you know, that much isn't sure. And so hopefully this second demo will work too, but it doesn't always. And you'll notice if I if this little stack here gets, if this part is just bent over too far, that'll bind and then they won't pay out just perfect. And that's just kind of your challenge when you build a Lego, you know, automated piece of equipment, how to get that to work. And even this cover plate, it's necessary to have it and I have to have it just the right height to hold the second most recent guy out. but. If it's down too far, once in a while it'll bind on the one that's ready to come out next, and then, you know, disaster. So it's like I almost don't want to push this down all the way. This technician is standing on by, but it hasn't been a whole lot of help so far. I guess I should point out just quickly here that this, you know, 
mechanism here is held in by this piece. This is basically just a rack and a couple of plates with the um, tile, long tile piece here. And then this holds it in to keep it from not coming out like that. And we'll just run it again. Oh, we got very lucky here. Got the first one out. Well, we're going to be in very good shape here. Yep. And looks like everything's dialed in. Although we can see this is stacks a little bit bound up, needs a little help there, but we have to do a little more engineering to get that perfect every time. And it's sometimes it's self-correcting, which is always gratifying to make machines that can actually survive partial failures. But there you have it. And maybe you too can build something that almost seems useful in the real world out of Lego pieces. I know that I spend a lot of time in college talking about the four bar mechanism and we spend a lot of time talking about all the equations of motion and the, the angles and all kinds of things and predicting the velocity of this guy based on the velocity of this guy but you know what we never did was actually just make one and I think that would have been instructive and more fun and so 20 years later, I have now made one for you to see. And again, thank you Bay Area, Le Bay Area LEGO Users Group for being such a great place to come and get these parts. And so many wonderful people there. Paul and Bill and so forth. And um, that's all I got to say. Thanks for watching.